Okay, so yesterday on my live, somebody asked me what was the biggest culture shock that I experienced when moving to Mexico after my deportation from the US, right? So I thought this is a really good talking point. I'm gonna do my top five. Number one, my son had a accident last year where he broke his arm and he required emergency surgery. We went to the ER, they admitted him, but when we admitted him, we had no idea that he would need emergency surgery. Uh, long story short, they would not treat him until we paid for his services up front, which at the time they quoted us 100,000 pesos, which it ended up being a little bit more uh, once we got the final bill to check out. But they wanted, at the time it was like 5,000 USD down before they would treat him. And I remember asking the nurse, like, well, what if we don't have the money? And she goes, um, well, you could try a different hospital. <laughs> and I was like, 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 and you know, I had heard a lot of stories. I've seen them on the news of literally people that die in the ER rooms bleeding out um, because they don't have, they can't come up with the money for services. So that's number one is um, the hospitals will turn you away, even if it's a life threatening situation, if you can't come up with the money to pay up front for the services or deposit. Number two, I was shocked at how far in technology government offices are here. For example, any type of, um, you know, tramite, like getting your ID, getting your passport, getting your driver's license, their offices are like in the 90s. Their technology, their processes, everything is paperwork. Nothing's really electronic out here. Um, so the, the simplest things are a very long procedure, right? If you go to get your kid's birth certificate um, or citizenship or passport, it's literally you walk into the office, you need helicopters, first of all, helicopters of everything. If you don't have copies, you can go to the copy, the copy place that's down the street, cross three rivers, ride three horses, jump a duck, and then you can get copies and then bring them back to us. And then when you bring them back to us, we're gonna tell you you forgot one copy of this and to go back and do it all over again. So that type of shit. <laughs> Simple things are processed. So. My biggest um, advice when people tell me like, hey, I'm going to move to Mexico. What's the biggest, you know, what do you advise? Get your shit from the Mexican consulate in the U.S. Because it is cleaner, faster. They have better equipment than we have down here in, you know, the like, so shit like that. Number three, you got to pay to use the restrooms here. <laughs> Imagine going out. This is why I don't like going out with my kids. Because every time I go out, it costs times five of everything to breathe. To use the restroom, um, it's between seven to 10 pesos. But I remember the first time where I realized like you have to pay to use a public restroom. I was like, what? And the toilet paper. So anytime you're going out and about, take your own toilet paper, your own wipes, and some change because most places charge you between five to 10 pesos to use. Dealing with banks out here was another culture shock because in the US, when you go into the bank, they treat you like a customer. Like, hey, thanks for giving us your business here. They treat you the opposite, like they're doing you a favor by holding your money, by you investing your money into their bank. Um, that was number four. And then number five, the cost of services, items, whatever it is that you're buying out in the street, vary depending on what you look like and what you speak like. So in the US, if you go to a small business, if you go to a store, most things have like a ticketed, you know, price item. In, in Mexico, um, they charge you based on what language you're speaking what you look like if you look like you're a foreigner i call it gringo tax local discount